So this is very unusual, but it does happen. It does happen. Got my label on it, built January of 2019. The computers normally, you know, you build them, you don't hear from a client for eight years before they call you again for something. Uh, we're gonna fire it up and see what it does. That's the first step, right? The customer, Mahdi in this case, wasn't really able to express or describe the problem in a, in a way that I could grasp it. So I need to see it. Let's get the panel off and let's take a look. First of all, let's just look on the inside. Anytime a computer arrives from shipping, we wanna just visually inspect it before we plug it in and turn it on because if there's a short or if anything's not plugged in correctly, we could cause some damage or create worse damage than what's already there, whatever the problem is. So let's go ahead and pull this off and see what we got going on in here. We know that that panel should be in here somewhere. That missing front panel that was in here. It should be in here somewhere. Now I have in the video notes placed a link to part one of the original build video here and the parts list to what this computer is made up of because I know those questions are coming, they always do. Where's the panel? The panel's pretty big, it really can't be missed. Oh, oh, oh. Wow. We're getting a bunch of first time stuff here. Never in my career have I ever seen a front panel. Look, one of the legs broke off. That would be understandable. I've seen that. If the leg breaks off of it right here, you see there's a, there's a leg right there. There's supposed to be another one right here. Just like on the other side, there should be two, which there is. And that would explain why it fell in. But why did it crack in half? Huh. Okay, so now I'm up in the corner. No signal means the computer is off. It's not getting the, the video capture card. It's not receiving any signal yet. So let's hit the power button here. Fan is turning, fan is turning. All the fans are turning. Everything sounds normal. So far, everything looks good. There's our BIOS. Again, everything seems normal. So the first thing I see on the screen is it says a chass chassis intrude please check your system fatal error. There's an option in the BIOS called TPM. It's the trusted platform module. You'll never see me turn that on. It's generally in use in corporate America. Let me, let me go back full screen so I can talk about this. It's generally in use in corporate America where employees can open up a computer, steal the RAM and put it in their computer at home or it's, it's employee theft is what it is. So the TPM module that's built onto the BIOS enables you, if enabled, to uh, secure the machine and let you know if it's been opened. Let's go back to the input here. It says there's a chassis intrusion. That's what it's supposed to say. Fatal error. So I need to get into the BIOS. We'll hit reset and just tap delete over and over and over again. And we'll get us in, hopefully, into the BIOS. Now, anytime you have a BIOS error and you're not quite sure what to do, just return the BIOS to its default, which will always be a, uh, an option. Now, interestingly, this is not allowing me to go in there and try it one more time. <laughs> come on, come on. Oh, it's not going to let us in. So here's what I'm going to do in this situation. I'm going to power the machine off with the power supply. Oh, oh, I see something very interesting. There's a fan header up here, and the fan header is severely bent. It looks like it might be one pin hitting another pin. Now, I don't know how that would have happened, but that would be what we call a short, and a short like that could cause that error. It can cause all kinds of weird behaviors. So without me doing anything else, let me turn this back on, and let me see if that makes any difference. Sometimes something that simple there's a four pin fan header and pin four was bent and it looked like it was touching pin three it was severely bent and it's an unused header so i just want to see if it makes any difference on the board no it does not that's fine i'm going to shut it back off now one of the things i 
I feel like I need to do is remove some unnecessary items from the computer to help the diagnostic. So what do I mean by that? We don't need this Wi-Fi card and we don't need this GPU. We can run off the onboard video. If either of these are causing a problem, we'll know because the machine will boot. If they're not causing a problem and the machine behavior stays the same, I can now see the entire board without these two items blocking what could be a CMOS battery or jumper to reset the BIOS. Make sense? So let's take care of that now. Make sure the power supply is off. Better yet, unplug it. Let me get this graphics card out first and foremost. Let's pop the 1060 out of here. And then let's get the Wi-Fi card out. Now let's fire it back up. Yeah, there's the BIOS battery right there. You know what? Let's pop the battery out too. Let's just take care of everything while we're here. And I want to check the health of this battery. I'm going to go grab my battery tester. Now, yes, people will say you're not supposed to touch the battery with your fingers because it gets oil on it and it, uh, it slowly erodes the battery over time. But these batteries last for years. And they're very inexpensive and they're very easy to change. And if you really, really are OCD about it, you can uh, get some nitrile gloves and rubbing alcohol and clean the battery, make sure it's nice and dry, and place it back in. But I do this all the time, it's no big deal. And here, battery's good. Now that being said, let's get back to what we were doing. So I've got the, uh, the BIOS has been reset by now, so I'm gonna put the battery back in. Whoops. And then we're gonna put power back in. Again, the switch remains off on the power supply during this. And then I'm gonna plug the HDMI cable into the motherboard now, since we're gonna use onboard video. And then we're gonna flip the switch on, we're gonna turn this back on, and then we'll go back over to the capture card and see what it says. Please enter setup to recover the BIOS F1 to run setup, okay? Remember, if you don't know the way the BIOS is supposed to be configured, just choose the default setting. So in this case, down here at the bottom of the screen, it says advanced mode F7. So I can hit F7 on the keyboard or click this with the mouse. That puts us into the advanced mode. And then we can go to, is it under exit? Load optimized defaults. That's what I want. Hit enter. And it says, are you sure? Yes, click okay. And then we'll go to Save Changes and Reset, and then click OK. Now ideally, the machine will boot up properly now. Now here it says, Reboot and select a proper boot device. Now that suggests to me that it's not seeing the storage device for some reason. Let's hit Reset on the case, and we'll go into the BIOS. Typically, just uh, most newer motherboards default to UEFI. Some still default back to um, SATA mode or Let's take a look here. XMP is disabled. Priority. I don't see the M.2 drive listed. Do we have an M2 failure? Is that possible? Where is my M.2 drive? Let's go into advanced mode. Let's take a look at what we see. Target CPU, blah, 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 blah. Don't care. PCH storage configuration. Intel RST. I don't think I want Intel RST, I want AHCI. I bet that's what the problem is, which what you guys basically said, make sure AHCI is on, and Intel RST, which is rapid storage technology, was turned on by ASUS by default. Gigabyte doesn't do that that I'm aware of, so that's sort of a surprise. Let's save changes and exit, just making one change. You make too many changes, and it works. You don't know which of those changes was the problem. So one change at a time. And it says, no difference. It's not booting, that's okay. Don't get frustrated. Now, I'm assuming that the customer did not wipe out this drive in their attempts to fix it. I don't know. I'm assuming that there, <laughs> this is a bootable drive the way that I configured it, but I could be wrong. Because from what I'm seeing, it should boot. It does see the drive, the drive has not failed. So I have, I'm maintaining that I have yet to see an M.2 fail. 
I don't know why that's on X2 mode. It should be on X4 mode. This is Envy Me. Chassis intrusion support. Somebody had turned that on. See here? On or off? That was turned on at some point. Now, since we reset the BIOS, it's remained off. But that's where that setting is. Boot configuration. Let's save that and exit and see what it does. So if I was building this computer brand new, this would be our first boot, and I would say everything we built is working. The drive appears to have been erased. That's what I'm guessing right now. So I've got a Windows 10 boot media, which would be the next step. When you see me do builds, this, this is the message I want to see if I have built everything correctly. I'm going to turn this back off. And then we're going to plug this back in. Turn it back on. It's booting off the flash drive right now. So we'll click next, install now. And I always install Windows 10 Pro. And accept a license agreement. And let's see if it sees. Always do custom. The drive is wiped. That is a completely wiped drive. So this customer somehow wiped out all of the Windows 10 partitions. When Windows 10 is installed on this drive, there'll be four partitions, not one. Um, if it's not in UEFI mode, there'll be two partitions. But as you can see, this drive only has a single partition. This is an Intel 660p one terabyte drive. We're gonna go ahead and click next, if I could find the right mouse. We'll click next. Now Windows is gonna create those four partitions right now. It's gonna format those four partitions and it's going to install Windows 10. Back to Windows Update, we're gonna again go continue to go back to Windows Update every time we restart until it says there are no more updates available. All right, let's close this out, let's shut it down, and let's do the BIOS update. I'm gonna take the USB stick, which has the BIOS update, place it in any USB port on the computer, turn it back on, and I will repeatedly hit the delete key on the keyboard until the BIOS comes up. There it is. And we're gonna to go to the tool option. We'll select the Asus Easy Flash 3 Utility via storage device, so just hit enter again. And we should see right here, the small storage device is the USB drive right here. Oops, right there. That's our BIOS. Do I wanna read the file? Yes. Do you really want to update the BIOS to 0801? I do. And down at the bottom of the screen, it says it's processing and just sit and wait, do not touch anything. Now the machine has automatically turned itself off and is automatically turning itself back on again. Again, I'm not touching anything. Not touching you. I'm not touching you. It's doing it all on its own. Leave it be. Let it do what it needs to do. You will know when it's done. You don't have to wonder. It's turned itself back off again, and now it's turned itself back on again. So it's done that twice. This is normal. Do not panic. This is what it's supposed to do. Some motherboards do this, some motherboards don't. Some motherboards may do it three or four times. Leave it alone. There you go, it's starting to boot. It still may not be done, so stop. Don't touch anything yet. Now it says, there's a BIOS error. After setting up Intel Optane or RAID, SATA mode must be changed for known issues. All right, well, we're not using any of those settings. This is not normal. It should have just come up automatically, but it did instruct us to press F1 to continue, which I've done, which takes us back into the BIOS. Everything looks good in here. I don't see any problem with any of this. I will hit F7 to take me into advanced mode and just take a quick look to make sure we haven't changed our, you know, lost AHCI or anything like that. Yeah, it all looks good. Everything's fine. So we should be able to just exit, save and exit. So save changes and reset, as Asus calls it. Click OK, and that should clear that error, and that error should never come back again. In fact, I can go ahead and pull the BIOS flash drive. I'm done with it. I never use that BIOS update again. Again. 
Something a little weird happened there. I'm not sure what's going on, but I'm going to just sit and wait it out and see what happens. Perfect. Working just like it should. Beautiful. Now, I can run Uncle Kerry's Windows 10 Optimizer, which I have on this flash drive here. So we'll plug that in. I like to copy it to the desktop. I don't like to run it off the flash drive. Double click. Yes. I want everything that's automatically recommended and hit apply. That's how hard that is to use. You will see access is denied in this list. That's just disabling indexing. That's normal. Some files are locked or in use. Doesn't matter. It's just, it's doing what it's supposed to do. Reset and all the changes I want are done. You have any idea how much time that saves me and I don't have to worry about did I forget to change a setting, especially if I get interrupted, if there's a phone call or a knock on the door and I'm in the middle of optimizing Windows, I might forget where I left off. And it takes a lot more time. And because I do so much of this, that utility is a godsend for me. So my thanks for, uh, you know, like I said, the genius of Nick Shaw for creating that. And then I delete it. Once, you, once you've installed it, or once you've activated Windows Care, uh, Uncle Carrie's Windows 10 Optimizer, you can delete it. You're done with it. You shouldn't have to ever run it on the same machine twice. Though, if you do a Windows 10 update, like to 1903, you might want to just double check to make sure Windows didn't reset any of your preferences. It's very quick. Yeah, everything looks good here. I like it. Okay, so let's take that out, and let's take that out. We'll put the plug back into the HDMI, because I don't want the customer plugging into that by mistake. And we'll remove the Ethernet and unplug power supply. Now that that's done, I can put the, this is a great Wi-Fi card. It's a four antenna, the Asus 88U, which is about $100. And paired with a high-end router, this will go faster than some wired connections I've seen. And that goes in there. Make sure that the Retention lever is open for the graphics card. Don't try and install the graphics card with the retention lever closed. That locks in place. We'll put the two screws back into the graphics card to secure it. We'll put power back on the graphics card. It's all back together, job done. So I'm gonna plug it back in and turn it back on just to make sure it works. I've gotta download and install the latest NVIDIA graphics driver on there as well. Looks like I dragged that down for some reason. I don't know how I did that. Okay, so now you see the graphics. Everything looks really big. That's because there's no driver installed yet for the graphics card. Here we go. All done. C drive, lots of free space. The D drive is the USB flash drive. The optical drive, I can right click and choose eject. That works. And I've got a spare panel to replace the one that broke in shipping, the drive bay cover, and I save them for just such an occasion. Because anytime I remove uh, a drive bay cover, I usually throw it in the motherboard box so the customer has it in case they ever want to take the, whatever it is, like in this case, an optical drive, in case they ever want to take that out. So I'm just going to put that back on. It just clicks in there. Voila, all done. And with that, um, thank you guys for joining me today. Thank you to Mahdi for sending the computer in and letting me take a look at it. It's always a learning experience for me to see, you know, what customers do with their machines or, or what it takes. Every machine that comes in for repair, it's always different, always different. This one certainly met that criteria. I believe it's ready, you know, with a few exceptions of, you know, updating the wireless drivers, it's ready to get boxed up and sent back. And I'll talk with Mahdi later just to double check and confirm if there's anything else he wants me to do while I have it. So thank you guys again for joining me. I will see you all again very, very soon. Until tomorrow, bye for now.